Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we are going to be analysing the Tiberium map pool. Um, I haven't done a lot of map analysis in my videos, uh, I, I discuss it a little bit with the event videos before we start normally, but generally I haven't done a, a whole video on map analysis. Uh, the main reason for that is that I provide private coaching for Command & Conquer Rivals and one of the lessons is in fact a map theory lesson. So I don't want to cut into my coaching too much by uh, making it making it a YouTube video, but um, I have been asked to make one a very short one on the uh, upcoming Tiberium map pool, and I thought why not? You know, give you guys a little glimpse into the theory side, and you know, a little bit of an idea of what that lesson would entail. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the maps. The first one is peaks and valleys. So Peaks and Valleys is a three pad map, uh, the pads are quite spread out. So what this means is that it's good for aggro decks that want to use their units individually. Um, it's not a map where you want units that work in tandem as, as a group. You want units that can each individually work on high power levels. So you're looking at basically like your classic not aggro with Militants, Lasers, Scorpion, Bike, Fen and Banshee, uh, th that kind of build. Um, each unit does its own thing very powerfully. Uh, that's uh, On a map like this where pads are spread out, that's the kind of deck you want to be looking at. Um, the Tiberium is quite far away from your opponent's base, very far away in fact I would say. Reasonably easy to defend um, from your base, which makes it an acceptable uh, tech map. Um, there are some downsides for it, uh, for a tech map such as the three spread out pads. Tech maps tend to want two pads or the pads close together so that once their tech units are out they can uh, take over the game very quickly. But the distance, the rush distance and the ease of protecting your harvesters does make it a decent tech map. Although I wouldn't say it's one of the better ones, I think it's just an acceptable one. Um, it's obviously good for Seth and Liang because they can both steal back pads. Uh, which is a very very powerful tool on spread out maps. And I would say it's not good for fortress style decks. Like I said earlier, it's not really one where you want your units to be working together. You want your units to work individually on a map like this. So two range unit decks like MLRS and Giga, I think are quite weak on this map. They can't cover very much of the map uh, on their own. And that's really what you want for two range units. You want them to be covering multiple pads at once, which uh, simply can't really be done on this map with a two range unit, not effectively. Obviously this isn't to say that you know two range units are going to be terrible, I just, I, that is not, not the kind of deck I would recommend for this map. I wouldn't suggest a two range deck for this map. So yeah, in, in summary, Peaks and Valleys I think is good for Agro, good for Seth, good for Liang, okay for tech, not great for combined arms decks that, uh, that, that want to set up in a single location. Alright, next is Open Prairie. Uh, this map is Three pads, again, closer together than Peaks and Valleys this time, but they're still not touching. Uh, they're only one tile apart, but they're still not touching, which is important. Uh, the second harvester moves to a slightly dubious position. It goes around the, the rock and harvests on the... Um, not, not dangerous, but not a great place for a harvester. If your opponent does move on to your sort of back pad, they can start harassing the harvester. So not a great one for tech. Um just because your second harvester is quite open and vulnerable. And again, the pads are spread out, so when tech units do come out, they can only really take over a single pad, and you want them to be able to take over multiple pads, or be on a two-pad map where taking over a single pad is enough. Uh, the rocks in the middle make the movement for ground units very awkward, but very good for air units. So this is a really nice air unit map. Um, air units can easily switch back and forth between the separate pads, a lot quicker than ground units can. So if you know if you have drone swarm and it's being chased by bikes, it's very easy to move it where you want to, and have the bikes have to take a long time to chase you down. So it's a very good air map, I would say. Um, it's okay two range map as well because you can park a two range unit in between the pads, the two back pads, and it'll cover them both. And the rocks create a natural choke point um, and give you some natural defense for your two range unit. And then also it's very easy to block off the bottom uh, and the top to make it difficult for people to flank your two range unit. So not great tech map, pretty good two range map, very good air map is in summary. Let's move on to slashed fields. So here's slashed fields. Um, this I think is the best 
super unit map in the game, probably. It's, it's definitely one of the best, so I'm talking about Mammoth and Avatar decks. Um, your Harvesters are extremely safe. They're protected by the edge of the map and by your base. They're very close to your spawn point, quite far from your opponent's spawn point. It's very easy to defend them. Um, the free pads are all reasonably close together again, and most of the fighting tends to happen on the middle pad. So once your super unit does come out, it's usually very easy for it to take over the game, and then immediately push onto your opponent's harvesters. Uh, it's also quite easy to swap between the pads because there's no obstacles between them. So once your super unit is out again, easy to clean up multiple pads. Um, the random rocks also that are near the back pads create this choke point to your base, which makes it a lot harder for a Jade player to get a chemical unit to your base after the first missile and blow up your base like that, which is another reason why the map is good for super units, because you don't get as counted by Jade as you often would playing one of those units. Okay, so in summary, best map for, um, best map for tech, like super tech, I would say. Decent for regular tech and a pretty good two range unit map as well because as you can see you can you can get onto the middle pad and lock down the back pad as well. So okay, next map is half and half. Uh, half and half is a map that I really dislike. I think it's one of the the worst maps in the game. I'm not happy to have half and half here again. But what are you gonna do? Um, I really don't like this map at all. So this is three pads. They're close together but they're not touching. But very importantly, to get to the safe pad of your opponent, oh sorry, to get to your safe pad, your opponent has to go through the middle pad effectively. Uh, it's basically impossible to flank around to the back pad. You have to go through the middle. This makes it very, very good for two range units because once you set up your fortress in the middle of the map, your opponent can't simply ignore it. They have to get through it if they want to fight for two of the three pads. So really good combined arms slash two range unit deck uh, map, sorry. Um, now, the downside of it is that the route along the top does allow people to harass your harvesters, bypassing your fortress. So, when you set up your fortress, you do also need to be able to defend your harvesters, and it's very difficult to do that on this map, so that is a slight letdown. But still, overall, a pretty good fortressy style map. Um, it's an okay tech map, for the same reason, once you get onto the middle pad, your tech unit effectively protects your back pad as well, because your opponent has to go through it. But also the harvesters are very easy to harass, which makes it a little bit worse. But you can't harass the harvesters and charge the pads at the same time, because the harvesters are not close to the pads at all. So that makes it a slightly better tech map. So okay tech map, good two range map. A uh, little bit awkward though, due to the open routes to your harvester. Harvesters are not that safe on this map. So that is something to be aware of. Also important to note, this is one of the best strong arm maps in the game. You can place turret on the opponent's side of the middle pad, which can shoot their safe pad, the middle pad, and also blocks access for ground units from their base onto the middle pad. So yeah, really one of the absolutely amazing strong arm map. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is two fuses. This one is a two pad map. The, uh, the pads are large which makes it very hard to stop your opponents from con con uh, from contesting them. So it's a pretty good air map due to the fact that the uh, the closer pad to your base is actually choke pointed a little by the rock. It's easy for a single unit to block all the ground units from going from your base onto the pad. This makes it a little bit better to have air in your deck. It's quite important. To, if, if you're a deck that focuses primarily on air, you can ignore that restriction, which can help a lot, especially since it's a two pad map and it's very easy to contest because the pads are large. You can throw cheap air units for a long time and really keep the game going uh, a long time on this map. So it's quite good for air. Um, it's an alright double harvester map, not great though. It's decent because of the two pads. Uh, generally double harvester decks want two pad games. But the second harvester is surprisingly open. It looks like it should be quite safe, but once you play the map a few times you'll understand this. It is actually quite vulnerable um, to, a, to a big push, like if you lose if you lose one of your pads, if you lose even just the their, your opponent's safe pad, the one closer to their base, it's a short trip to your second harvester. So not that great a tech map uh, because of that, the, the harvesters aren't too safe. Um, it also looks like it should be a good two ranger map, it was an amazing two ranger map when the pads were only three tiles, now that they're four it's a little bit worse because a two range unit can only cover one pad and three quarters of another pad, um, 
you really want your two range unit to be controlling the whole game. And the fact that your opponent can stall by standing out of range on one of the pads is quite awkward. Having said that, it, it's obviously still a decent two range map. You can cover you can cover almost all of the pads with a two range unit parts behind the missile. So I'm not saying it's not a good two range map. Obviously, it is just slightly worse than it used to be back when it was a free pad. Uh, for, uh, sorry, a free tile pads. Okay, let's take a look at Rush In. This one was already in Tiberium League, I'm pretty sure, last season. Um, so most of you probably have a good idea of this map, a good, good grasp on it. But let's go through it anyway. So it's a spread out free pad map again, similar to Peaks and Valleys. So once again, it's very good for Ceph and Liang steals. However, it's not as good for aggro as, the, as Peaks and Valleys was, because this weird choke point in the middle... Uh, makes it very difficult to get onto the middle pad. If you, your opponent controls the ground, it's very easy to lock out. Um, it's very easy to lock out once you control the middle pad. It's very easy to lock out your opponent from getting back onto it. So it's a decent two range map as well because a two range unit can cover the middle pad and also the route to the back pad along the top. So it is actually quite difficult to get past a two range unit without, uh, without fighting it um, to get to either, either of the relevant pads. So yeah, decent two range, and again, this is a very, very good strong arm map. Absolutely fantastic strong arm map because strong arm can again pop up on the other your opponent's side of the middle pad, blocking them from getting in, and also shooting anything that's on the pads. So really good strong arm map. Uh, not a great tech map, I think. Um, it's not horrible, but the harvesters tend to split in the early game, which isn't great. Once you run out of the first set of Tiberium, your harvests have a long way to travel before they start harvesting again, which means there's a big downtime of your income. And the pads are quite spread out, so it's hard for a single unit to take control of all of them. If you make, say, a mammoth and take over the middle with it, your opponent just puts a cheap air unit on the middle and fights for the other two pads. And then when you try to move your mammoth, they move other stuff in. So yeah, not not a, not amazing tech map. Okay, let's take a look at the bullseye. Um... This one is, again, pretty good tech map. The harvesters are reasonably safe at the back there. And there's two two pads are touching, which is great for tech, because it means you can push onto your opponent's side, and then you just automatically defend your own pad by having a tech unit they have to get through on the front. Um, I would obviously be remiss if I didn't mention that, again, strong arm is fantastic. Strong arm turret in the middle can hit all three pads. It creates a lot of control. It blocks ground units from moving through. So really, really strong, strong arm map. Um, great air map as well, for the same reason. It's quite difficult to swap between the pads with ground units. There's a very, very narrow choke point of only one tile whip between all three of them. So air units being able to ignore that is very, very powerful. Also good for bombers like Borker and Inferno, because again, it's so, so tight. Those units that do a lot of AOE damage create a lot of, a lot of control around the area. Um, not as good for two range as it looks. It looks like it should be amazing for two range because a two range unit can sort of set up in the middle and cover all the pads. But your two range unit actually needs to push up quite a lot more than you'd like to to do that. Obviously, if you can set up your two range unit and your fortress in the center, you're golden. But it is difficult to set up a fortress if you're pushing past the middle of the map and you basically have to push up to the middle of the map here with your fortress. So, not as good for two range as it looks, but obviously. Still good for two range, just not as good as it looks, because it looks amazing and it's actually just okay. Alright, so the last map we're going to take a look at is Pillbox. Pillbox is a very weird map. Um, this one's a bit eclectic, it's difficult to it's difficult to judge properly. So the weird the weird the, the thing about this is this these gaps below the missile and below the rock at the middle top pad allow for weird dukey maneuvers of flanking around the top pad. So it doesn't actually turn into as much of a top pad fight as you expect. Having said that, that is still where the majority of fighting will happen, is in that middle pad. But it is possible to sneak around the bottom. That is a, 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 a flanking maneuver you can make. Um, and you can catch your opponent off guard with it. So it's not as strong as it looks. Because uh, it looks like if you just hold the top pad with, say, a fortress type unit, you should be good. But it's not. it doesn't actually work out that way due to these sneaky roots under the bottom. Um... So the first harvester is very safe, but your second harvester goes to a slightly awkward position. So I don't think it's an amazing tech map. And again, the pads are quite spread out. So again, not an amazing tech map, uh, but not a horrible one either. 
I'm not a big fan of tech on this map just because the choke points actually prevent you reinforcing your harvester quite a lot. An opponent can move into the choke points and harass your harvester while stopping your reinforcements from protecting it. These, these big rocks just outside your base cause a lot of problems when trying to protect your harvester. So not as good for two, har two, ma two, pa sorry, two harvesters as it looks. But again, Liang and Seth are amazing for stealing on this map. The pads are quite spread out. Fighting is going to be concentrated at the top middle pad generally speaking, so you can you can use the Liang or the Seth to steal the back pad, um, and that can be really, really powerful. Alright, so in conclusion, from this map pool, there are three extremely good strong arm maps, there's about four good Seth slash Liang stealing maps, two to three good tech maps, including the best super unit map in the game in my opinion, three to four good air maps, and about four good fortress maps. Now, obviously, there's seven maps total, so really hard to pick a single archetype that's going to perform well on all of these, because out of the seven, I would say only four really make sense for each archetype. So you're really only getting slightly over 50% by picking a good map. I will say that it looks like slightly better for air-based decks than last season did, uh, there's actually over half of the maps now are, are pretty damn strong air maps, which I think gives GDI a little bit of a boost. GDI tends to be an air-based deck these days, or tech. Um, and yeah, the maps that are the maps are pretty good for air and tech. Uh, if, like if you combine those two, the ones that are bad for air are okay for tech, generally speaking. So yeah, I think GDI looking. I mean, obviously Nod will still be better than GDI, but. GDI looking a little bit stronger on this map pool than last season's map pool. Um, and strong arm looks pretty good as well. There's a lot of maps where strong arm is excellent. And there's the maps where strong arm is bad, she's still decent. I wouldn't say there's any like there's no horrible strong arm maps like open water. Every map is pretty good for strong arm. Uh, but yeah, doesn't look like it's gonna be possible to objectively pick an archetype for this season. Uh, the maps are quite disparate. So you're just going to have to pick whatever. You, I think it means you can pick whatever you want to play pretty much. Um, and just hope that you get the right maps each time. Alright guys. That'll be the end of my map analysis video. Uh, we're only going to do Tiberium League today. We might do the Masters map pool in the future. If that's something people really want. But yeah, that's a little insight into how my um, map theory works. Uh, obviously the, the lesson during my coaching is a lot more in-depth and complicated and I go into the decks as well. But uh, here's, a, here's a brief overview so you guys can get some kind of an idea what it's like. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed that. And I'll see you all next time.